Hi, Sean. That doesn't make you uncomfortable, does it? Not at all, Michael. Not at all. I appreciate you know what it. it is. Um, and, you know, I, I, I've got a face for radio, that's for sure. No, so, no, I, I, I got that no, no, no. Absolutely untrue. Not if you ask these two. All they talk about is well, your that, that's The right. NFL Network wastes a graphic when you're on because you. I don't, I can't read the graphic. I'm just I'm lost in the, the pool of blue in your eyes. <laughs> oh, my God. Those are your moneymakers, Sean. Those are your moneymakers. Yeah, All right. I, well, luckily, my kids, uh, they, they got my eyes, and, and my son got my thighs. Uh, luckily, not, <laughs> luckily not my daughter. All right, let, let's talk about this giant offensive line. That's one of the big questions with this team moving forward. Do you see improvement? Is this, is this offensive line good enough for this team to go far in the playoffs if they make the playoffs? You know, they're, they're really, they've gotten a lot better uh, in pass blocking. And, and I think Eric Flowers, he really struggled earlier on this year. Um, he has played better. Um, I, I thought the offensive line did a great job filling in for Justin Q. And when he went down, I mean, he's been their best offensive lineman all year. When Pew went down with the, the knee injury um, and, and then having Brett Jones come in, uh, I thought Brett was going to be okay and he'd be able to handle himself. Uh, he went out after, I think, the second series. So we had to bring Marshall Newhouse in at guard. Uh, he's more of a tackle. But I, I just I give that whole unit a lot of credit for how well they played against Cincinnati. Uh, and to be able to ice the game with the four-minute offense. Now, this team, it, it, they are playing a very similar to last year uh, with the exception of they're closing out games. And, and to do it this time with the ball, to not have to put your defense back out there, I think it was a breath of fresh air for the defensive side of the ball. It was a huge boost of confidence for this offensive line, for Rashad Jennings, and really for, for Ben McAdoo, who can say now, you know what, all right, I've got a little trust now in these guys that, that we can pound the rock when everybody in the building knows we've got to run the ball. Sean, what's more important to the greatness of an offensive line? I can't hear Don. Don's not, Don's not Hello? up there. There he is, right. Donnie. What's more important? I put him to, I put, I put him to sleep. No, not at you all. Did. Although I don't see oh, no, you. No, no, so. no, you didn't. Um, the offensive line, what's more important? Uh, the, the individual talent of each offensive lineman or the continuity of those five guys playing together for a long period of time? Yeah, it's definitely a, a sum of all the parts. And I think, you know, when I think back to, to our, our group, uh, with Snee and with Soiber and Deal and McKenzie. You know, I think individually, if you would have separated us all and thrown us all on other teams, you know, we, we probably wouldn't have been considered great. You know, maybe Snee uh, ends up getting that moniker on his own. But it was really the, the group and, and the way that we worked well together, uh, the way that we really understood our weaknesses. Uh, I knew on every play who, who had to wear the hard hat. You know, hey, look, on this play, it's a deal. He's, you know, he's going to be all by himself, so you can kind of sneak a peek and help him out. Or, you know, I know which one of my guards is going to be one-on-one against, a, you know, an ass-kicking technique, and I know all right, I, can, I can give him a little shoulder help or I can help him out here. So those are the things that, that make you great. I, I think this, this offense is, is still learning a lot about themselves. I, I think having the running back rotation hurts you. You know, Rashad Jennings being hurt and missing time, that hurt him. Shane Vereen was their leading rusher. Uh, you know, going into last week, he was the leading rusher with 147 yards, and he hadn't played since week three. So they've had a lot of change at the running back position. Um, Perkins has come in and, and, and tried to fill in, but I think all of those things uh, can equal disaster when you don't have that continuity, you don't have that rhythm. Uh, they, they look like they're finally um, getting some of that confidence, especially in the run game. And I think Eli looks a little more secure in the pocket when Marshall Newhouse first went down and Bobby Hart came in, those next two games, Eli was not comfortable. And, and the ball was coming out sooner than it should have. He wasn't setting his feet. At the Green Bay game especially, there was at least three or four throws that kind of die off and, and just never made it to the receiver. And it was because he wasn't stepping into the football. He didn't trust the protection. I think he has a much better uh, trust right now with the way that they're playing. Do you think the protection has also helped? It seems like they've settled on tie. And, and Adams is tight ends. Guys that can actually block a little and catch the ball. Uh, There's been a problem for them for a couple of years. You think they finally found an answer? Uh, I really like William Ty. Uh, you know, the blocking, when it comes to tight ends and blocking, it's all about your, your give a hoop leader. And, and it's, all, it's not necessarily about you've got to be this huge guy. It's just do you care enough to, to work harder than the defensive end and, and to try harder? At, really, as a tight end, all we ask is just stalemate. In the run game, all we need is a stalemate. We're not asking you to pancake anybody. Just get in front of the guy, stalemate him. Don't let him beat you across 
your face and, and get a tackle for a loss. He can't allow penetration. So I think William Ty has done a good job with that. Um, the other thing with William Ty, he just seems to have a much better presence for doing something after the catch. You know, he catches the ball, and now he's looking to make a guy miss. He's looking to turn upfield. You don't see him running backwards. You don't see him, you know, looking confused as far as where the first down is. He really has a good sense of that, and, and that's just, you know, so either you wake up uh, in the morning with it or you don't. Um, I don't think they had that with Larry Donnell, and, and I think – uh, William Ty has really done a good job. This offense is a tough offense for tight ends because you're never running the same run play from the same position. You're sometimes lined up as a fullback, and then you go in motion, and then you become an H-back. Sometimes you're on the ball blocking the defensive end. Sometimes you're off the ball. So there's a lot of different looks. They ask the tight ends to do a lot of different things, and it's really hard. Unless you get 25 carries, 25 runs, you're not running the same play over and over. You don't really get a lot of rhythm. Sean, it's almost like Eli's become more like Peyton this year where it seems that he's barking a lot at the line of scrimmage. It seems like he's changing the play. How much of that is just keeping the defense off balance or how much is he going to the line of scrimmage and having to change the play when he reads the defense? Well, I think one thing that Eli has always done is he, he's a perfectionist. He wants to get in the perfect play, and, and sometimes to his own detriment. You know, I mean, Giants fans, you know, the, every single game, they, they're in no huddle offense, but yet the play clock's going down to 5 4 3 2 1. That doesn't make sense. If you're in no huddle, the play, you know, you should be snapping the ball with 10 seconds left on the clock, plenty of time to spare. But he really, you know, he does such a good job. He's almost too smart for his own good sometimes and he wants to get the perfect play out there. Um, I, I think what defenses are doing right now is they're playing too high, cover two, cover three, and they're saying, look, we're not going to let you beat us with a deep ball at Odell Beckham. We know that's what you want to do. We know you want to get Sterling Shepard in the slot one-on-one versus our third corner and try to hit a corner or for a post route. We're not going to let you do that. So what happens is now you have a six-man box, um, because they're in three wides 96% of the time, and they're begging you to run the football. And, and what the Giants did last week was they were able to run the football against that six-man box. And Eli sees it, and he knows it, so he comes up, and he's changing a lot of the plays from pass plays to run plays, uh, which kind of goes against what most quarterbacks would like to do. But uh, that's the kind of player that Eli is. He knows you know, what it takes to win the game, and, and uh, I think he's done a great job of, of getting this offense in, in the right position based on what the defense is dictating. So with Sean O'Hara of the NFL Network, we have a little under a minute left. Is this giant team a legitimate Super Bowl contender, or should we just think playoffs? Uh, they're not a Super Bowl contender right now, and, and I know the defense has played really well. Um, the, the one thing that jumps out at me, in, in 2007 when we won the Super Bowl and when Giants won in 2011, they had a multitude of pass rushers. We would bring in Justin Tuck. We would, you know, we would rotate guys in. We had Jay Alford coming in. The, the, the fact that Jason Pierre-Paul and Olivia Vernon don't come off the field is a problem. Mm. And and they have they have had more snaps than any defensive end combo in the NFL right now. Uh, and the Giants don't really have a third great pass rusher. Well, Adiki Zua really hasn't stepped up. Um, they have to get pressure with Landon Collins with the safety. So. Uh, until they can get continuous pressure and, and until they can get another rusher to step up, this defense is not going to be able to take over games like they did previously. Sean, great stuff. If we don't talk to you, have a happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. Thanks for coming on. All right. Thanks, guys. And uh, I, I don't know what I did, but i got to wait till week 11 to get the phone call to come on the show. So, wow. You know, Hot take. Sorry. Awful. Sorry. You know what it is? Awful, we only, when, it, when it becomes important, that's when we call that's you. That's right. Because <laughs> Bill Parcell says it doesn't even count until yeah. Thanksgiving. Okay, all right. All right. Take it easy, Sean. Bye. Thanks, guys.